We're going we're gonna to welcome the speaker in a minute. I'll get you up at the end. We're going to welcome the speaker to come up and bless us. Pastor Pat Messidi and his lovely wife, they've come up all the way from the Gold Coast. And he's, uh, he, I mean, he's a priest and a king. He is blessed by God to function uh, like, like Joseph. He's got a coat of many colors, a multifaceted anointing and multifaceted grace that is over him. And uh, I've been blessed by him and his ministry. He has no idea about this, but I remember watching him, uh, watching a message he did years and years and years ago when I first came to Australia. And uh, I was just absolutely blessed. And, uh, and I just started following him on, on YouTube and watching different uh, messages and different different things that 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 the Lord had uh, put upon him because I'm a businessman at heart the genos in my family I'm, I'm probably there's only two preachers in our family the rest are all business people amen and that's my degree I did a you know a, a bachelor's in business admin and all that but I said to the Lord Lord uh, I just want to be able to be a blessing uh, in both ways and that's why you know I, I don't know if you know I've sit with in the board of uh, Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship Australia and uh, now for the last two years they invited me to come upon or come into their board and it was for the purpose of seeing th what this man started to sow seeing that happening in Australia God raising our priests and kings amen hallelujah so I want you to tap into the grace that he carries Tap into that grace. Tap into it. Because I believe mantles and graces can be caught. Amen. Catch it. If you're struggling in any area of your, of your life, I mean, right now, catch that grace and you will begin to see yourself prosper. So God bless you. Thank you, Pat City. Can we all stand and just welcome him up? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, can we give a little, oh, well, well, don't sit down just yet. Come on, Toowoomba, we're just getting started. Hey, that fire alarm was a sign of things to come. Is this the Anglican church this morning or the Pentecostal one? I'm not sure. That, that fire alarm was a sign of things to come. Come on, give a lot of shout of praise. Oh, come on, you can give a lot of better shout than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seats. I, uh, well, firstly, I want to say thank you to Pastor Jimmy for allowing me to be here and to strike a match to the kerosene that's in this church. How many of you believe in God for a move of God in the next few days? Can I get an amen? Come on, you, you, listen, listen. I preach better when you respond. The more you respond, the quicker I'll finish preaching. Say amen or ouch. And uh, look, I just want to know, I want to tell you, we've had an incredible move of God over in Bow Desert. The presence of God just absolutely flooded the place. We were there eight days straight, 16 meetings every morning, every night. And I tell you what, I, I believe in the apostolic ministries. Can you give me an amen? amen. Can you give me a decent amen? amen? So let me tell you, before I get started, first thing, I want to thank Pastor Jimmy for having the guts to allow me to come into this town. Because a lot of, a lot of preachers are absolutely spineless cowards. And let me remind you that in Revelation, the first people that God sends into the lake of fire are cowards. Can I get an amen or, so, or an ouch or something? Look, if, if you want a three points and a poem, I'm not that kind of preacher. But how many of you want to absolutely storm hell and see God visit our nation? Can you give me a shout? And, and I'm not just blowing smoke here. I believe God can move upon our nation. Do you believe that? Yes. And, and, and I'm looking at some of you, and I, I remember some of your faces from back in the day. We're getting prettier as we get older. <laughs> and, you know, God also forgives lies. Just give me a wave if you understand. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank Pastor Jimmy because when I came to him, we, we were, we, we've had a passion for revival for many years. Last year at our prayer and pushback, was it, did anyone see those online things on prayer and pushback? Give me an amen. Well, you know, we, we had, and then through our rallies, over 585 people come to the Lord. 30 to 35% of those people baptized in water. Hallelujah. How many of you want God's fruit to remain? Can I get an amen? amen. And uh, li listen, I, I didn't come here just to bless the saints. I, I, I came here to, to revive the church. How many of you believe we need revival? How many of you would like to have a revival? 
Now, this one is when the numbers go down. How many of you have ever been in a, not a meeting, not a conference, not a Shunda Baba meeting, a genuine revival? I mean, how many of you have been in a sovereign, genuine, you've been in one? Not so many numbers now. I'm here to tell you, I didn't come here to preach fancy sermons. I came here to see God fall in revival. Can I get an amen, please? And let me just say this. Revival doesn't happen to the outside world. Revival happens to the church. I had a preacher say to me a couple of weeks ago, Pat, I don't like you talking about revival because when you talk about revival, you're presuming that we are dead. I said that would be about right. Because when I look at some of these mega churches that should have stood in a time of turmoil. Oh, good Lord, let me get down here. When they should have stood and the generals should have stood, they ran and hid behind tax cuts and government grants. And let me remind you one more time. It, it was easy to put up BLM stickers. But when people were losing their jobs in this country, and now we've got a dictator running around, wants to fire you because you're a Christian. Well, I've got news for dictator Dan. He's in deep yogurt. He messed with the wrong people. Let me say this. People said to me, Pat, you know, you, you got very political. This is not about politics. This is about right and wrong, good and evil. We have the highest, we, we have euthanasia going rampant, abortion going crazy. Come on, we've got the spirit of Antichrist running left, right, and center. You don't do, and everyone's gone quiet. Except for me, Jimmy, in this house. Come on, can I get an amen? How many of you refuse to go silently? I, I, I had one preacher say to me, well, you know, Pat, if Jesus is coming, why bother? Hello? See, here's the problem. I, I haven't even done started preaching. Here's the problem. People fall in love with the feeling of, I just feel Jesus, I feel. Pentecostals are the most biblically inaccurate people I've ever met. We are the most biblically ignorant people. Does anybody out there still love me? Give me a wave. See, we, we fall in love with the feeling of Jesus. I just love, I just love, I just feel, I just love, I just, I just feel, I just love, I just, oh, 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 I just feel, I just love. Let me just remind you, you've got to fall in love with the Word of God. Because Jesus is the Word of God. And if you don't follow the Word of God, you're open to deception, progressive culture, and council culture. And that's exactly what's happening in the church in Australia. The place that was the bastion of worship has now become Woketopia. Can I get an amen here? Give me a wave, please. Give me a wave, you get it. So anyway, let's get back to these meetings. So I just had to let off a bit of steam. Is that okay? People say, oh, Pat, you look angry. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, we're not angry enough. How can you not be angry when you've got transgender stuff going right through our schools? People say to me, you know, what, 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 you know what, what, why, why are we, what's the problem with, you know, little kids you know, hanging around listening to transgender, read, uh, transies and all this sort of stuff, reading books? They forget to ask these questions. Why do they want the audience of the children? And the church says nothing. You got worship leaders putting transgender and, and pronouns up on their on, on their on, on, before they do their uh, Instagram, whatever it's called. Sorry, I keep talking fast. I had three espressos this morning, <laughs> and we stay silent. The church was never meant to be silent. That's my message tonight, by the way. Now, now let me let me tell you what we're going to do. Firstly. I'm bringing our entire worship team up from Brisbane, Gold Coast, all over. They're all arriving this afternoon. Tonight we're here at 6 p.m. Then tomorrow we're, we're, we're hitting the bat. They're letting us loose on a Baptist church. Now, now listen carefully. Tonight at 6 p.m. What time? 6 now I'm bringing our whole worship team. Listen to me. 
don't, don't stay home. Oh, my kids are going to go to school. My kids were raised on the floor. Let them fall asleep in the presence of God, and when they're older, they won't depart. Come on, don't, don't give your children and grandchildren reasons to have an excuse why they shouldn't go to church when they get older. Oh, you know, we can't go to church tonight because the kids got to go to sleep. Get them under the Holy Ghost. He'll knock them over and they'll have a good sleep. Yeah. Come on, don't, don't, don't give me that. We, we, we can't go doing this anymore, church. We, we, we can't be people. That I'm, I'm gonna, oh. So what time tonight, tell me? Six o'clock. My whole worship team's going to be here. Yeah. How many of you believe we ought to lead with worship? Come on, pull down strongholds. We've got other churches joining us. Now, here's what I want you to do. I just want to get a few things out of the way. I want you guys, to, no sitting down the back. Show me, your, I can tell how hungry, I want, not, not this morning, I'm not looking. I can tell how hungry you are by where you sit. I want to be, and I can tell how hungry you are by how late you come to church. Oh, service starts at 9.30, we better get going at 9.25. Would you walk into the presence? How dare we do that to the house of God? Uh, I break my nail. Better than breaking God's heart. Uh, my kids, discipline them. Get them up earlier. How many of you out there still love me? If you had an appointment for a specialist at 9.30 and you walked in at 10.30, you wouldn't do that, but you'd do it to the house of God. How dare we do that to the presence of God? How dare we? To the presence of the King of Kings. That's a sign of spiritual condition. Anybody out there still love me? Just give me a wave. I don't like him already. <laughs> Isn't that the preacher that 20 years ago, you know, all that stuff on Google? Let me tell you what you can do with all that stuff on Google. Right across it, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You invite people to say, oh, isn't it that guy? Isn't it that, that guy? Isn't it that guy? Yeah, that's the guy with grace upon grace. I'm a walking, talking, little example of the grace of God that every one of us has benefits of. Can I get an amen on that, please? So tonight we're at 6 o'clock. What time? Now, we've got morning meetings as well. In the morning, I, I'm bringing some of the greatest preachers in this country here to Toowoomba. We've got 10 a.m. To, one, to, to one, 10 to 1. Tomorrow, I've got a, a, Apostle Dave Gilpin coming in to bring a massive word from God at 10 a.m. You don't want to miss out on it. I'm probably going to let Pastor Jimmy loose in the morning as well. Yeah. I've, got, uh, I've got Apostle Mark Ironside coming in. We're going to be praying for the sick. I'm going to, in the mornings, I'm going to be teaching as well on end times and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Come on, how many of you believe that we... Can I get an amen, please? Yeah. We need to understand who the Holy Spirit is. He's not a ghost. He's not a feeling. He's not an atmosphere. He is a person. Come on, are you with me? And so, what time in the mornings? What time? 9.30, my wife says. Sorry. Oh. So you're correcting the preacher. Oh, she went straight to the website. Okay. Turn up at 9.30. <laughs> Sorry, 9.30. What time? Okay, erase what I said. What time? What time tonight? 6 p.m. And tomorrow night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we're at 7 p.m. Is that right? So give people a chance to go home, have a bite to eat, and let's see God move. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, please don't not show up. Every meeting's different. And I know God's going to do some great things. If you've got your Bible, I promise you I'll preach short, just like me. Amen? <laughs> Blessed are the short-winded, for they shall be invited back. I want to read a... Uh, yeah. William Booth said something. William Booth, the great leader of the Salvation Army, he said something and he said, the chief danger of the 20th century will be religion without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, heaven without hell, and salvation without regeneration. We are living in those times. 
And part of the reason is I believe we are suffering from spiritual neglect. If you've got your Bibles, turn there with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews, there is your basis for coffee in the Bible. I actually might preach from down here, Jim, Pastor Jimmy. I think you were right. Um, can, can we do that? Thanks, Pastor Jimmy. Yeah. Can you see me if I go from down there? Because I'm like Dickie Knee, you know. How many of you remember Dickie Knee? Look at all the carnal Christians. That was the days when you could be funny on television, not have to be crude and rude, eh? But I believe God's going to do something in this country. Can I get an amen? amen. Now we're going to clean up some stuff. But Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1, it says this. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, when you read therefore, that's what it's there for. That's the funniest joke I've got today. <laughs> we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Now, that, that word, lest we drift away, is the picture of a boat. Everybody say boat. That is drifting away from its anchorage point. Now, what has happened right now in, our, in, in, in the church in Australia and basically among churches right around the world. We have seen a drift. It's like when people talk, when, when I talk about what happened to me in 2001, people say, oh, Pat fell. Pat did not fall, Pat slid. Not one of us falls. Not one of us is defeated. Oh, come on, help me. You either obey or you disobey. There is no middle ground. Come on, you know that. Oh, in a moment of weakness. You just didn't arrive in that moment of weakness. There was a drift. There's a song that talks about little hands, be careful what you, what, what you do, and little feet, be careful what you go. And, 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 and that drift comes in, and it becomes a flood. The problem with what happened two years ago during the pandemic I, I, find it abs I find it absurd. You, if you met before, two years ago, and someone had a sniffle, you're a super spreader. <laughs> but, but, at the AFL in Melbourne, a few weeks ago, with 100,000 people, and, all my, and, and, and by the way, at 11.59 on the Friday night, they removed all the... Magically disappeared at one minute till midnight. <laughs> Talk to me, people. Give me a wave. But when the church should have risen up, the church got involved in a thing called End COVID for All, headed by the, the king of Wotopia in Melbourne, the brother of the former treasurer. And churches signed up billions of dollars so they could go and teach the poor colored folk, because we white folk no more. <laughs> to educate the Samoan and the Fijians. One movement. My old movement in Fiji, unless you've been triple shot, you can't get a credential. I didn't realize the anointing of my living saviour that shed his blood for me was subject to three injections from a government that doesn't care about me. Amen. Somebody say amen or ouch. Now, I don't care whether you got jabbed or not jabbed. Not my business what you do. But don't you force me. Because you have to force me, I'm starting to go smell a rat. Amen. And the drift didn't start back then. It started beforehand. You know, see, what happens is when we want to, you know, we, we've got to keep up with the world. We've got to have the lights, the sound, the smoke machine, and the skinny jeans. <laughs> I wish I could fit in the skinny jeans. You've got to have the Gucci stubble. 
Now one major worship leader, who shall remain nameless, paints his nails. And because his daughters say, oh, Dad, that's nice. See, here's the problem with men right now in our society. And let me just remind you, I haven't started my message yet, (laughs) that the book of Malachi ends with returning the hearts of the fathers back to the children and hearts of the children back to the fathers. There has been an abdication of godly men in this country and their enemy has come in like a flood because men are weak and woke. And you've got men trying to be women. What the heck is that about? Now we've got Calvin Klein out there, you know, advertising. They, they get a pregnant man. Firstly, number one, I'll give you a million dollars, sir, if you can get pregnant. That's why I don't wear Calvin Klein's no more. I don't know what they put in those things. <laughs> give me an amen or an ouch. Give me a wave if you're still with me. Look, if I don't offend you publicly, come and see me later. I'll do it personally. <laughs> Good to see you, my brother Matt back there. Good to see you, Matt. He offered me a coffee this morning up there at... Uh, Matt, can you hear me? Give me a wave. Yeah, yeah. He saw me in my, in my tracksuit looking rather ungodly at 6.30 a.m. You don't look too good. <laughs> and I ain't going to be painting my nails to pretty up either, I can tell you. <laughs> but now we're going to paint nails. And that's okay. Oh because, oh, because you know what? You know what? You know what? We're just, no, 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 saints. We're just called to love. Love. No, brother, you're judging me. You don't love me. You've got to love. Can I just remind you what the Bible actually says? You've got to love in truth. I thought I'd get a clap on that one. You can't love. Love may cover a multitude of sins, but love does not give credence to a multitude of sins. I thought that was a good one. And when we slide into that trap of trying to be like we were, listen, let me tell you, we're called different. We're called the royal priesthood. We're called a holy nation. we call called blood law. We were never meant like to be any. We are aliens and strangers. You're trying to look like the world rather than looking like an alien. Look at the person next to you and say, I know which one you look like more. <laughs> but the slide, the slide, the slide that happened, left, we drift away. You see, what has happened in our culture and in our world? Then we got into bed with government. Just give me a wave if you're with me so far. The house of God was never meant to be funded by government grants and, fed, and, and, and fringe benefits tax. It was meant to be funded by the people of God that obediently tithe. Now don't go telling me tithes under the law because I'll scream you down. Tithing came under the Abrahamic covenant when Melchizedek bought our bread and wine, communion. And then Abraham did, how did Abraham respond to communion? He paid him a tithe of all. And after that, I don't know if, oh, I might get into it this week. We might talk about, how many of you want to be financially free? Give me a wave. All right, we'll talk about that one morning. I don't know which morning. But after that, God said, I am your shield. I am, the, I am that. First time he said, I am your shield. First time he said, I, I am, I, 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 don't be afraid. First time God gave Abraham a promise of a Messiah. When? After he paid the tithe. Tithe was the gateway to Messiah, to Israel. And one of the reasons why there's little revival is because people don't tithe. And people don't give. Well, this this went down well. (laughs) Just give me an amen. Give me a wave. The slide. Oh, but grace covers that. You know, under grace, I can give 5%, 8%, however the Lord leads. What drugs are you smoking? (laughs) 
the slide. Now, I'm not talking about legalism here. See, when they were, a pastor called me a few, I got in trouble because I saw Scott Morrison come back from the G7, got his marching orders from Klaus Schwab. Just prove me wrong. Have a listen to the intro he got at the World Economic Forum. They gave him marching orders. You're here helping us with digital identity, blah, 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 blah. Mar- Again, people said to me, you, 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 Romans 13. You keep reading Romans 13. What Paul was saying in Romans 13 was, listen to me. Listen to what Moses was saying. You governments are under God. And you better do what God says. When, when the Bible talks about confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, listen to me, saints. I need you to hear me. Are you still with me? He wasn't saying confess that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord, which was a slap in the face of Caesar. That's why they got martyred. The Romans didn't care how many gods you had. The more, the better. As long as you didn't have an exclusive one. Sounds like our culture now, right? See, we're living in the days of the Roman Empire resurrected. I'm going to speak on that one night. What you're seeing now with the worship of Molech, Ashtaroth, the Transformer. See, this whole thing of, you know, turning men to women and women into men, that's nothing new. That happened back in the days of Lot. The spirit of Molech, which is the sacrifice of children, that's not new. And it all started with the entrance of Baal. Did you see what they were doing in the Commonwealth Games? Baal was manifested in a, in, in, in a bull. And there they are at the Commonwealth Games. By the way, headed up. With the king now, who's part of the World Economic Forum, I'll leave that alone. Have a look at the photo of 1992. And then at, at, at the pandemic, what a brilliant time to bring him back. 56 countries are under the rule of this one guy. And you think you own your land? I don't think so. He could take it off you like that. Just give me a wave if you're still with me. And who suffers the most? The farming communities. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Prove me wrong. And tell me why he has a four meter statue in the Brazilian Amazon, which I'll show you photos of, subcaptions, saviour of the world. His mother never did that. And by the way, you can't prosecute him for any crimes either. He can do whatever he wants and can pardon everyone he wants. And this all happened through the gateway of what happened overseas. Question. We all know where this started. But have you seen any repercussions happen to where it started? In this country, Australian Bureau of Statistics, people that actually died directly of the COVID disease was eight people. Everybody else had underlying issues, major underlying issues. They would have died if they'd have got pneumonia. But, but listen to me. You say, Pat, what's this got to do with revival? Everything. Because Isaiah says there's two things going to happen. It says, it says, though darkness cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Arise, shine, for the light has come. There are two, po- oh, come on, help me, I'm preaching better than you are. There are two polarizing things. There is a kingdom of darkness vomiting all its hell. And there is a remnant of the kingdom of God rising up. Man, that... What's wrong with the Presbyterians over here? Help me out here. (laughs) Let me try that again. There is a remnant of God rising up in Toowoomba. And we might be old, and we might be grey-haired, and we might come into here walking with a walking stick, but I tell you what, the fire of God's going to fall. Neglect. 
There are pockets of revival. All over. I, I, I've been talking to some guys. And one guy said to me, oh, Pat, I went and got my third booster to go and preach divine healing in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> what in the... <laughs> what in the COVID are you thinking? <laughs> how many of you wonder why people are so dumb and they still know how to breathe? Ah, oh, but they're anointed. Let me, say so, let me just say something. I make you one solemn promise. I will not push one person over. I don't do that stuff. Either the Holy Ghost hits you or he doesn't. doesn't need my help. I don't do that nonsense. Holy Ghost is big enough to figure out whether you've got one leg shorter than the other. The supernatural of God is supernatural. It is not sensational. Are you hearing me, folks? It is not sensational. God doesn't need theatrics. In the early church, again, I get all these guys calling me, getting mad at me because I was trying to keep the church open. Romans 13. I said, hang on a minute. Moses disobeyed Pharaoh. Paul disobeyed Pharaoh. Jesus called Herod a fox. All because I touched a sacred cow. I'm minding my own business, sitting on my lounge, about to do my business meeting on a Thursday night. I've got a lot of pressure on me for, with my students. Saw what Morrison was doing. One case in this country. Let me give you a history lesson. Come on, be with me, folks. One case. And he comes back, and his gold medal person, Gladys, didn't she end up well? All hell starts vomiting on New South Wales. Now, I'm a street guy. I smell a rat. I wasn't brought up in church. My mum taught me. My mum couldn't read and write and couldn't speak English, but she taught me how to read a rat. She said, never just listen to what someone's saying. Listen to what they're not telling you. I'll sign, sign this, end COVID for all. What's in the back? Oh, we don't know, but just sign it. Come and educate the people. That's what they did. Have you read the latest reports from the CDC? Have you seen now what's happening? CDC said any man between the age of 19 and 49 shouldn't have got it. Oh, they're telling us now. But you conspiracy people, you super spreaders, you. Come on. But you know what? You show that to people now, they go, oh, 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 yeah, but. They got the spirit of yeah, but. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, but. But think of how many we saved. Are you looking at how many are fallen? Flies are dropping like sports people. Because we neglected what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? That the merchants of the earth would be deceived by pharmakia. Oh, come on, give me a clap or something here. Are you with me? And yet, when you don't read, when you don't read the Bible, the Bible will tell you what's going to happen tomorrow today. And when I got up and spoke, 200,000 views later, and God said, get up, start a revival, start talking. I got beat up by the Christians. The Pauline answers, the Malcolm Roberts, the, all the Freedom Parties and, and members of the Liberal Party were saying to me, you're right, you're right, you're right. They kept wanting, am I right? But they kept wanting to jump on our, on our platforms. Now, some of them I wouldn't touch. Because to me, it's not about politics. I don't care whether you're Labor or Liberal. Let, let me just give you an insight. It took a Liberal Prime Minister... To bring in the World Economic Forum 
and the World Economics Agenda on Bodily Autonomy. Now, it's taken the leftist socialist with lipstick to introduce the second one that we all wanted, which was a climate change agenda. Let me just remind you what the Bible says about climate. In Genesis. As long as the earth remains, summer, winter, seed time, harvest, four seasons. And who came up with this strategy? We've got to pay politicians trillions of dollars to change the weather. They can't even change their underwear. Are they, are they our leaders? They're not my leaders. They couldn't lead me across the street. We must submit to authority, but we must never submit to control. Whether that's in government, the home, or the church. When Christian leaders are forcing their staff against their wills, I have to deal with this every single day. Listen to me, folks. Not once, once a month. I had to put security cameras around our home. Why don't you just be quiet? Because God raised me up. I didn't ask for this fight, but I'm sure going to do everything I can to end it. And they, listen, we, we, the, the body of Christ didn't pick a fight. They picked the fight when they said, you can't sing, you can't worship, wear a nappy on your face. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Oh, come on, folks, help me out here. You've got people paranoid. that They're still running around. Christians, Christians, Christians singing. I shall not fear. I shall not fear. I have all power. Not here. These are the Christians in Tasmania. No, no, no. Go. Give me a wave. You get it. Now, I know I upset, I know I rattle some of your cages. If you want to do it, go ahead. Just don't create a spirit of control. Give me a wave if you understand that. I'm going to share during this week how to defeat Goliath. Goliath and Antichrist, number one, have one thing that they want control. And listen, listen to me, folks. The children of Israel. For 40 years, 40 generations, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm mistake. 20 generations were slaves in Egypt. Every revival, listen to me, every revival that you will ever see, every movement needs an agitator. No, no, Mo Moses was an agitator. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Our Pharaoh was an agitator. The spirit of Antichrist is an agitator. Caesar was an agitator. And it needs liberators. That's you. That's me. Let me try that again. It needs liberators. That's you and that's me. And just when you think, and just when you think, and just when you think that you're too old, let me tell you what God says about you. You're old enough to remember real awakenings and real revivals when we would throw our hands in the air and sing the songs of the Spirit. Oh, come on, someone give me a good run to Mashanda. Come on, are you with me? We used to sing scripture in song. Now it's, ooh, ah, oh, belly aching lot they are. You're not going to get any hours and hours out of my, my worship team. Part of my worship team was, I don't want you to play music. I want you to, I want you to, 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 to throw bombs at the kingdom of darkness in worship. Yeah. Our worship team is going to bring you to the highest place. And I don't want one woke person on my team. No woke. Go woke, you go broke. I haven't even started my message yet, Pastor Jim.
But how many of you understand this was a slow fade? But what about your spiritual life? Do you see how it goes quiet when you do that? <laughs> Our spiritual life. Oh, it's, church is starting at six, but let's get there in time to miss the offering. Not here. These are the South Australian people. <laughs> and it starts at six, but, you know, they do all that singing and stuff, and I'm not into all that singing, and it's really not about, you know, it hurts my ears. I sound loud. And it's not about you. It's about God. Yeah. So get in early and worship God. Yeah. Come on, talk to me, saints. Yeah. Talk. How many of you want to move a God? Yeah. Give me a wave. If you want to move a God, stand up. I promise you, I'll turn you around and I won't look. If you want to move a God, stand up. Stand up. See, are you standing? All right, sit down so I can't see. <laughs> you want to move a God, you've got to show up. Yeah. Come on. Don't sit down and watch the reruns of Kath and Kim. <laughs> look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> Come on. See, what you, what you feed, I'll finish up. I said to Pastor Jimmy, what time do we finish? He said, oh, don't worry, just keep going. I went, no, nah, ain't that dumb. <laughs> I'll be done by 12, is that okay? Give me a wave, it's okay. Give me a wave, it's okay. <laughs> what you neglect regresses. Come on, fellas, you remember when you were you're chasing your woman, your wife? Oh, you remembered Valentine's Day, birthday. You were so on fire. You even remembered her mother's birthday. <laughs> you open the door. You close the door. And then, you know, you dream about running along the beach in slow motion together. <laughs> How many of you have ever run along the beach in slow motion? Give me a wave. I run in slow motion. That's the only way I can run is in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> and then one day he comes up to you and he says these words, will you marry me? <laughs> and you go, I can fix this. <laughs> and you go, yeah. <laughs> Three years later, doesn't open the door. He starts singing this to you. Put another log on the fire. Cook me up some bacon and some beans. Come out to the car and change your tires. Darn my socks and sew my old blue jeans. Come on, baby, you can fill my pipe. Then go get my slippers. Clap! Oh, pour me up another cup of tea. Put another log on the fire, babe. And come and tell me why you're leaving me. What do you expect? You girls are going, that's right, Pat, you tell them. Now let's talk about you girls. <laughs> ah, before you marry, oh, I can't eat that. A moment on the lips, forever on the hips. <laughs> Don't snuggle up to him like that. <laughs> now it's like, well, it's covenant relationship and he has to love me like Christ loved the church. <laughs> Where's that Krispy Kreme shop? Where's those ice vovos? <laughs> and then you blame your thyroid. <laughs> no, don't, don't confess. <laughs> it's not your thyroid at all. It's called neglect. We come to church. Come on, preacher, feed me. Feed me. Touch me. Touch me. And we grow, and we grow, and we grow, and we grow. And the pastor says, come on, let's take a nation. I, I, I can't move. <laughs> it's my thyroid. <laughs> Am I, do you think they'll come back tonight, pastor? Do you think? <laughs> come on, are you with me? Yeah. It's neglect. See, and I speak to you about revival. I'm not talking about you being revived. I've got to put a thermometer in my mouth. If my meetings aren't hot, there's two reasons. One, 
I'm not on fire. Two, the people aren't hungry. So when we pray, let's not pray like Deuteronomy, like, like we're reciting Leviticus. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> the other night, we had 35 people baptized in the Holy Ghost in one night. Do you know most Pentecostal churches don't even preach baptism in the Holy Ghost or speaking in other tongues? What ever happened to that? Oh, no, it's, it's you, you may be filled. No, no, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, you shall be. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall. We're not called to pray for the sick. We're called to heal the sick. Well, that went down well. We put in these prayer requests, and I get it, and God honors it, I think. But the Bible commands me to heal the sick. Give me a way to get it. Every single one of you have got that gift upon you. Now, the Bible does call for the elders, if, if there's any sick among you, Oh, I can't go to the meetings because I'm sick. If there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, bow their hands on you, and your and your you and the prayer of faith shall what? Heal the sick. It doesn't say, is there any sick among you? Sit at home, watch Kath and Kim. Sixty minutes could be good. Get on Facebook and post some stuff. Come on, don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Come on, we've got to, we've got to be, we cannot be, we, we cannot be negligent in the spirit. Can I get an amen? amen? See, what we are facing now is a war. <sighs> We're facing a war. The church has been a pretty bride with makeup far too long. You are a warrior bride. Come on, give me an amen. amen. That means when we pray, we pray like we're going to war. Not no. There's a shout. See, the enemy wants your mouth. Oh God, someone give me a run to my shanda rose. Come on, give me a wave. Give me a wave if you're still with me. If you're not waving, I'm assuming you don't like me and I could care less, to be honest with you. He wants to shout. Whenever you see God do so, he speaks to mountains. God said, speak to your mountain, not about your mountain. Not a, oh, you should see my mountain. My mountain's so sick. I've had my mountain for 35 years. Oh, my God, my mountain. Oh, my mountain. It's my sciatica and my life. Oh. Not here. These are the West Australian Christians. Come on, talk to me. God said, speak to the mountain. With your mouth, confess. The whole basis of the Christian faith comes out of your mouth. We were never meant to be my martyrs like Marcel Marceau. That stuff does my head in, honestly. I'd have made a better, better Baptist than a Pentecost. Oh, we're going there tonight, praise God. So, uh, tonight we're here. No, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tonight we're here. Tonight we're here. Tonight we're here. Tonight we're here. Tonight we're, we are here at 6 o'clock. Here's, where are we tonight? It's here's the clock. But we cannot neglect. Therefore, we must give earnest heed to the things we've learned, lest we drift away. There's two revivals going on right now. Whichever one we focus on is the one we're going to get. Things are about to get a lot more difficult. For the church in this country. Dan Andrews set the bar this week. I'm going to say something to every Christian in this room. Not one of you has a safe job anymore. So you better get yourself financially independent. And any church that uses any secular facilities. Do you know what happened to church on a hill in Victoria? All the buildings they were using for Sunday worship now around the country have now been taken off them. Dan threw a rock in Melbourne and it had repercussions everywhere. 
Listen to me. If you think this is just about Melbourne, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. And let me tell you something right now. God told you, Jesus told you this was going to happen. Biggest church in this country, or was, now it's about 20% of its size, whose labels become their Babel, more interested in gold records than they are in the anointing of God, In their youth group the other week, they were teaching critical race theory. No, I'm not kidding. Everything I say, I check, double check, triple check. Number one, I want to get sued. Number two, I'm not going to lie. I won't sing one of their songs on my meetings. And I help start the thing. I've had a gut for it. I've had enough. Now, my, I may have had my challenges. But let me just tell you something. You can't kill a man that's been dead twice. So I've got nothing to lose. Listen to me. Give me a wave, you get it. Pastor Jimmy knows all about my life and everything else. I went to America to preach a few months ago and I got in because I got my exemption and all this kind of stuff. And this church was promoting me and someone put up one of those posts, you know, that's on from one of the newspapers. And so the pastor called me and says, Pat, do you mind if I repost that post? I said, well, what would you do that for? He said, because I want to write across it, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come and witness grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. See, the same grace is for you as for the preacher. Amen. Give me a way if you understand that. Amen. That doesn't excuse anything. That puts us all in the same boat. God isn't looking for perfection. He had to bypass Moses. He had to bypass David. He had to made a complete turn off on Paul. God's just looking for someone with enough guts to put a rock in a slingshot and throw it. And that's you. Come on, are you with me? I want to leave you with this thought because then I'm going to close in prayer. Tonight we're going to have a massive altar call here. We're going to believe to heal sick, cast out devils. Who's up for it? Give me an amen. What time do we start tonight? What time? Get in here early if you can. Where are you going to sit? Right up the front. Oh, what happens if the music's too loud? If you sit down the back, I'll turn it up. <laughs> Bring some earplugs. You would have a problem. You will have a problem in heaven. Most of us are so old, we can't hear anyway. So what's the problem? My wife talks to me. I go, what did you say? She talks to me. She, well, I hear exactly what she's saying. It's called selective hearing. But no, not really. <laughs> not really. But, you know, most people, once you've been touched by fire, you're not impressed with smoke. One lady down the back yelling and screaming. That's awesome. She believes it. Once you're touched by fire, you don't care about smoke. And most people in a fire don't die from fire burns. They die from smoke inhalation. And we've got to get rid of the smoke and turn up a fire. The body of Christ, we were never meant to have a color called beige. You Christians are black and white. Yes! But add another color in there. Red, hot, blood, bought. Red, black, white. That's our color. We don't do beige. 
Do we love? Yeah, we love. Do we correct? Yeah, we do. Do we accept? Yes. Are we inclusive of everybody? Absolutely. I don't care whether you're gay, straight, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Dan Andrews says, aren't we all God's children? No. I corrected that on Friday. You saw me, if you saw me with Malcolm Roberts and, and James McPherson on our Facebook. I said, we are not all children of God. We are all created by God. And by the way, what's a guy who passes the most awful abortion laws got the audacity to let that come out of his mouth? My Catholicism. You didn't write your Catholicism. I'm an ex-Catholic. I know what Catholics believe. And we were loved. Well, why weren't you so loving to the people that you shot with rubber bullets? Why weren't you so loving to the pregnant lady you threw on the floor and had her arrested? Why weren't you so loving to my friend Monica Smith when you locked her in jail for three weeks? And then you sent your guys over there to harass her to get all her papers and all her emails and all her text messages. And when you, she refused, you threatened her with three months jail. And where were you when you knocked on the door 15 times to my friend's church who spoke out against you? The only Pentecostal I know are two Pentecostals in Melbourne. And the church stays silent. Actually, it's not the church. It's the church leaders. Because the people are waiting for someone to blow a trumpet in Zion. Because the soldiers are waiting for the generals to stand up. That's why I honor Pastor Jimmy. Now, how many of you are hungry for a move of God in this nation? Would you stand up? I'm going to ask you for five minutes to come and stand out the front here. Come and stand here at the front. We don't need any music, anything like that. And we're going to intercede for this nation. Come on, we're going to pray for God's fire to fall tonight. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on, come on, right up the front, right up the front, right up the front. I'm not laying hands on anyone or anything like that right now. That'll all happen tonight. But right now... What we're going to do on the count of three, we're going to begin to pray for our nation. Can I get an amen? amen? How many of you can pray for the souls that are lost? How many of you can pray for a revival to happen in this church? Amen. Come on, on the count of three, I want there to be a shout. And we're going to keep praying, praying like this nation's soul, and it does. This nation's soul is dependent. One, on the count of three, two, three. Come on, lift up a shout, church. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for a move of the Holy Spirit. Lord, start a fire in Australia. Start a fire in this nation. My God, do something significant upon this people, my God. Father, turn this nation around. God, move upon our nation. God, move upon our nation. God, start a fire in me. Start a fire in me, Lord. Start a fire in us, God. We come against the spirit of pharmacia, witchcraft, abortion, euthanasia. Father, we call heaven down. Holy Spirit of God. Come on, reach out to God, church. Father God, you hear the prayers of your people. Holy Spirit of God, fall in this place. Holy Spirit of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Press in. Press into the presence of God. Father, start a fire. Start a fire today in Toowoomba that spreads right throughout the nation. Start a fire in the indigenous people. Start a fire in the Asian people. Start a fire in the white, yellow, black, white, Caucasian. Father, start a fire in our churches. My God, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, start a fire. Start a fire, God. Holy Spirit of God. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. We, we, we scream more than that at a state of origin game. Come on, lift your voices to God. Lord, we cover this nation in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we cover this nation with the blood of Christ. Father, we pray for a spiritual awakening in our churches. Holy Spirit of God, a true fire. 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 Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit of the living God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this awakening in Toowoomba. Lord, we pray that you would come and visit your people. Lord, let this be a benchmark for what happens in the nation. Spirit of God. Spirit of God, move. Hallelujah. Church, I, I want to drop this in your spirit. And then I'm going to hand over to Pastor Jimmy to close. According to your hunger and your level of faith, that's how God will respond. If we're not hungry, how many of you are hungry? How many of you can believe God? What I'd like you to do is get on social media. I mean, I think you all follow me on Facebook or whatever. If you don't, please follow us. All of our stuff's up there. Or I know that they've posted stuff on, on the church's uh, Facebook. Get out there and invite friends. And if anyone says, oh, isn't that the guy? Yeah, yeah it's, that's the guy that's watching the blood of Jesus, just like everybody else. That's first thing. Number two, don't ever get tired of asking people. Number three, if you know Christians... Invite them. This is not going to be political. This is going to be a war zone for the soul of our nation. Can I get an amen here? Amen. This will affect you, your children, your children's children, should the Lord tarry. This is serious. This world is not our home. But while I'm here, I'm going to fight for it. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds. That's thinking and bringing every thought captive. The war that's been happening for all these years is a war on the minds of people. That's the, the Trojan horse. The entry point was this pandemic. And then the assault on the mind came. How many of you are going to believe God? How many of you going to pray like you never prayed before? We're going to give like we've never given before. Let's people raise their hand on that one. Come on. Rodney Howard Brown spoke to me this morning. He prayed for the revival. How many of you know Rodney? Rodney said, tell the people they've got to call down these things. Prayer, giving, souls, and revival. Any one of those four that they don't do, revival doesn't come. Now, he knows a little bit about revival. He's only been going something like 970 days. He prayed for us this morning. And I know we're going to experience something powerful. So we've got to show up. We've got to pray up. We've got to give up. We've got to intercede up. Can I get an amen? amen. If you need to have a nap this afternoon, go and have one. <laughs> Come on, brother. You know what I'm talking about. But just get ready. We're going to have our worship team here. This place will be completely different. Pastor Jimmy, over to you. Thank you for having us this morning. <laughs> what time tonight? <laughs> All right. Pastor Jimmy. Thank you so much. Come on, let's put our hands together for <laughs> Pastor Pat Mercedes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to say uh, the grace in a moment, but I just want to honor uh, this body of mine of God um, for standing for righteousness. Amen. You know, I've just come back from Perth, and I remember listening to Pastor Margaret talk about everything that she has gone through for standing for righteousness. You know, you know getting her house egged, you know, her checks being declined by by. by Bad pe people who work in the banks that don't ag agree with her stand for righteousness. I mean, being banned from certain airlines, come fly them and all that sort of stuff. You know, and, um, and, and I remember just going up to her and saying, you know, thank you for standing for righteousness. You know, they, 
They want to change the name of the stadium down in Melbourne, which Margaret Court uh, Stadium, change it to, you know, Dan, Dan Andrews, because he hates her and absolutely hates her. But, you know, she sent him the, a message and just said, bless you. That's all she said, bless you. And uh, she has stuck to her guns, stuck to her guns for righteousness, for righteousness. So we thank God for those leaders that are standing and who are not wavering to the left, to the right, and the voices like Patma City that are actually speaking up. How many of you know righteousness exalts a nation? You know, if we can pray for God to begin to raise up our nation, he begins by restoring righteousness. Because righteousness is the elevator that God uses to take the nation back to where it needs to be. There's no kind of wickedness and God brings the nation to that place. He begins by bringing righteousness in. You know, they canceled her membership, tennis membership. Can you imagine? She had a lifetime membership to tennis. Just canceled her membership. Told her she's not even welcome to go play tennis in a local tennis club. Uh, there, just the amount of rubbish. And some of the celebrities, Serena Williams and all them, accusing her, attacking her on media. First of all, she is better than Serena Williams. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. She had 25 grand slams. Now, Serena Williams has had a lot of grand slams, but Margaret Court won all of them with her right hand, and she's a left-hander. Come on. You, I didn't even know that till just then, when we went. This, she's a lefty, but she played right-handed and won 25 grand slams. You can't beat that. Hallelujah. So we are blessed. Amen. We are blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the word that has come forth, the challenge that has come forth, the stirring that we are feeling in our spirit to step up and to step out and be able to become a change. You've called the church to be the salt of the earth. But Lord, where the salt has lost its flavor, we pray that the salt will be flavored. The Bible says it is flavored with fire. So we pray that it shall, it shall cup, get its flavor back with the fire of the Holy Spirit. So this week, we thank you, Father God, for what you're beginning and what you're starting to release, even not just in our city, but in our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, and we'll see you.